Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy and it's the weekend. Time for a couple more slide rule videos. Today we're going to talk about the table function of the slide rule and solving equations by proportions. So, let's get right into it. Now, so far we've taken simple problems like this, 3 times 4 divided by 2, and we've solved them on the slide rule. The way that we would do that, of course, is we would take 3, divide it by 2, and then come out to 4 and we'd find our answer, 6. However, there's another way that we can do this that's a little easier than going through all of the arithmetic. All right, so we're used to solving problems like this on the slide rule, and the way that we would do this, of course, is we would come out here to 4. We would divide it by 8, which means we put the 8 over the 4. And then we would multiply it by 6 and come up with our answer, 3. However, there's an easier way to do that. Let's treat this as an algebraic equation. Let's set this equal to x. So 4 times 6 over 8 equals x. Now we can actually divide both sides by a number. And as long as we divide both sides by the same number, it's still an equivalent equation. So we can have 4 over 8 equals x over 6. We simply divide both sides by 6. Let's see how we look at that on the slide rule. So, what this says is that 4 is to 8 as x is to 6. So if we come out here to 8 and we put the 4 over it, all we have to do is come over here to the 6 and read our answer right above it. That's pretty simple. There's a lot less slide and cursor movement if you solve by proportions. Well, how does this work? It's based on something called the table function of the slide rule. So for example, if we look at the slide rule right now, we have 1 over 2. Now, what's happening here is that any number that we have on the D scale will be divided by 2 on the C scale. So any number that we have on the D scale will be cut in half on the C scale. So let's try it out. Let's see, we've got 3 and 1.5. We've got 4 and 2 it works all the way down the slide. Now that's very helpful, and I'll give you a good example of how we can use that. Now here's a typical problem that you may have seen in math. One degree of longitude equals 111 kilometers. So how many kilometers would be 30 degrees or 45 degrees? Or how about the radius or the circumference? Normally what we would do is we would go to 30, and then we would multiply it by 111 and get our answer. 3,330 kilometers. However, to do the next one, we have to come out here to 45 and go through the whole process again. Let's just do it once. Let's go to the index, and we're going to set the index on D to 111. Now all we have to do is we come out to 30. And right above is our answer. We come out to 45. Right above is our answer, in this case, 5,000 kilometers, roughly. Now, if we want to look at the radius, all we have to do is come out to 57.3 degrees, and that's one radian, and we get our answer, 6,370. Then we want to look at the circumference, that's 360 degrees. It's just a hair shy of 40,000. So that's just a brief introduction to the power of the slide rule, something that it can do that a calculator cannot do. A calculator can't solve by proportions at a glance, and it can't set up a table. A slide rule is very helpful in doing things like radiometric dating, for example, where we're looking at half-lives of carbon-14, and we want to find out how old an artifact is based on the amount of carbon-14 left in the sample. So practice that a little bit, play around with it, see whether or not it works for the CI scale or the CF scale, and just kind of toss it into your back pocket, into your toolbox is another way that you can solve problems if it's convenient. Remember, there are many paths to the same truth, and how you solve the problem doesn't matter so long as you get the right answer. This is Bob the Science Guy. Follow me for more. Take care.